Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Look at this fog. The fog is so heavy today, but it's supposed to be a beautiful day. We're our first 80 degree day in 2020 here in Georgia. So we're on day 22. And y'all, oh my God, this one, this is my least favorite thing to do. My least favorite thing to clean. And that is the refrigerator. I hate it. I just can't stand it. Um, and it's one of those things that it's because I don't like it. And I don't know how many other people are like this, but I, because I don't like it, it's so easy to put off. And then it's one of those things that if you don't do it, it just gets worse, you know? Um, so it's really better to stay on top of this one. And, uh, I, I know for me, for some reason, rotten food, it, it gags me. I actually have a video where, um, I'm, it, it's cleaning a nasty house. It's, there's about five videos, I think in that series. And when I'm cleaning the kitchen, I actually, uh, I think there's a, a little, I did it in fast motion, but you can see like I'm gagging because this house was just so disgusting. Um, but I just, I can't stand it, you know, and I, it really is, you know, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. If you leave things in there long enough, they start to become science projects and they grow hair and they, they start to smell really putrid. So hopefully your refrigerators are not that bad, but if they are, today's the day we take the plunge. Um, now, I, you know, I'm doing these videos in some sort of a sequence. And today is Wednesday for me. And today is the day that we put the trash out. So this is, for me, the best day of the week to clean out the refrigerator. And the reason why is because it will go from the refrigerator to the trash to the curb. It's not going to sit in my trash can and just ugh, get worse, right? So that's a tip that I have. Um, pick a day of the week closest to whenever your trash goes out and the night before or, you know, earlier in that day, that's the day you need to take all the stuff out of your refrigerator that you need to throw away. So it doesn't sit around just becoming, uh, uh, you know, the creature from the Black Lagoon or whatever, some disgusting, icky, gross thing. And then... We want to make sure that we wipe off the uh, all the shelves in the in the drawers. You know, um, unfortunately, down in those drawers, they get really gross too. Even though you may only keep vegetables, or, you know, maybe in a bag or something, but we don't put them in bowls or you know. Um, so they have a tendency to leak as they decompose. They, you know, they they become mushy. Oh God. See, I don't even like talking about it. But anyway, yeah, we want to make sure that we take things out of there. If, they, if it's not edible anymore, we want to take them out of there before they become a worse problem. And then rinse out the, the bins. We want to wipe those things out. Um, and another thing with refrigerators, depends on the refrigerator, especially if you have an older one. The gasket around the door that makes that seal when you close the door to keep all the cold air in. Sometimes, I guess when they get older, they may leak a little bit and there's moisture in your refrigerator from the products that are in there. Um, you can, if you look at it, it can get a little um, mildewy. Now, I know everybody loves to clean with bleach, but okay or certain props certain things and the reason why is because yes it will kill the mold yes it will whiten it back up um but okay it will also help deteriorate that that rubber band or that plastic seal there okay you don't want to do that you want that to stay as intact as as possible even though you know things age or whatever but you don't want to use bleach on it because it will help break that down and then you're going to have less of a seal okay so there are other products that you can use other things that you can use to get rid of the funky stuff around the edge of the refrigerator soap and water is one good thing um maybe a little baking soda some uh, vinegar and water those type of things. If you like your essential oils, you can use those too. 
my personal feeling is I know that mildew's gross and you you know, um, but in a case like that, it's just it's a stain. If you've cleaned it, it's a stain, okay? It's not growing anymore. It's just stained that seal. And I would rather, in my case, I mean, you, you toss it out, but um, I would rather have a stained gasket that works and keeps my food fresh than a white gasket that's broken down and won't seal, okay? I mean, it's a preference. And sometimes, you know, you have to make a some kind of a compromise, but you don't want to use bleach on that because it will break that seal down. Now, when you look at that seal, it's kind of, it's got folds on the top, right? Because it's got this pressure. That's how it gets the seal. And, you know, sometimes it's difficult to get down in there. Well, here's a handy little tool. Um, it is a toothbrush. Get a toothbrush and dip it in your soapy water and just kind of go across it gently. You don't want to deform it. But those, the teeth on the tooth, the teeth, the bristles on the toothbrush will get down into those grooves and get whatever kind of gunky stuff is in there out. And then this is, uh, this is the part I hate the most. Okay, so underneath your bins, which are usually at the bottom for your produce, uh... Sometimes things spill and they run all the way down under there. And the best thing to do if you spill something in your refrigerator is wipe it up right away. If you don't, what happens is it dries out, it gets hard, it gets sticky, it gets harder to um, it gets harder to remove it. Hey, Amazing Friday, how are you today? Thanks for stopping in. So anyway, when you have gunky stuff at the bottom of your refrigerator and it may be dried and hard, um, get yourself a warm, wet, wet rag. You can put a little soap on it and just set it on there and let it soak for a while. It, it, you probably know when you start cleaning out the inside of the refrigerator if there's something down there. Um, and you can do that at the beginning when you first start. Get those wet rags and lay it over the anything that's hardened or gotten sticky and hard to just wipe off. And let the wet rags down there to soften that up. It's gross. I know it is. I'm so sorry. Wear gloves. Wear a, a clothespin on your nose if you have to. But let it sit there and soften those things up. And in the meantime, you can clean out all your shelves. The tr shelves in the drawer. Um, you know, the... Uh, the walls, the upper walls and the back, you can clean out around the outside of the door. You can even clean outside the refrigerator. Take all your magnets and your um, pictures and whatnot, and anything that you have on there and wipe down the outside. And then at the end, hopefully it's had enough time to soften up and then you can wipe that out and, um, and then get the bottom of the refrigerator clean as well. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I see that you just got a shark when you something about your dustbin, but it, the message went away before I could catch it. Catch that. I'm sorry. Can you put that back through so I can see it? I'm so sorry. I was talking. <laughs> this is one of my friends. Anyway, that is my least favorite job. I don't know what yours is. Um, go ahead and put it down here. Everybody has something that they just hate doing. Um, I know you said something about the tank on your, your navigator. You like your navigator? I hope you do. I love mine. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to have to run. I want to thank you for stopping by Mr. Amazing Friday. And I'm going to be working today on some other types of videos. Yes. Sharks are my favorite. Um, oh, it's full of dog hair after vacuum. Oh, I see. Okay, so you have a pet, and it really, they they have a lot of suction in the shark vacuum cleaners. Um, for those of you who don't, I love shark. That is my favorite vacuum cleaner. I've had a lot of different kinds of vacuum cleaners. This is a sidebar. Um, yeah, so I've had Kirby's, paid $1,000 for a Kirby like 20-some years ago, which it was a nice vacuum cleaner, overpriced, I think. Um, but, um, very heavy. It was a very heavy vacuum cleaner. Now, um, having a cleaning business and bringing my own tools and equipment to jobs, 
I, you know, I have to think about that. So when I did my research, I, I found that the, um, you hate Kirby. Yeah. Kirby's are heavy. They work well, but they're heavy. So anyway, when I decided on what type of vacuum cleaner I wanted to use for my business, I wanted one that had good suction. I like that the shark has the HEPA filter because that helps, um, capture allergens and whatnot. It doesn't have a hose. Yes, that's another thing. With the Kirby, it doesn't have a hose. Um, at least mine didn't. Maybe they have some that do, but the one I had didn't. Um, and the hose is awesome. And you use that for lots of different things. Um, but, excuse me, oh, it's allergy season. Um, I liked that it had a tank. I didn't have to put a bag in it. In the tank, I can wash um, and I can do clean it out between customers. So I'm not taking one dirt from one house to another. Uh, you know, I just empty it right there at the house that I'm cleaning before I leave. Um, so I like that on it. Uh, and I don't have to buy bags. Uh, so that's a cost saver right there. And they're, 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 they're not the lightest vacuum cleaners. Some of the cheaper vacuum cleaners, are um uh, yeah they do they ha kirby's have a lot i mean not kirby now what am i saying shark they have a lot of attachments and depending on the shark that you buy some of them are a little more expensive but they have all kinds of attachments i i have the basic um the brush and the crevice tool i don't have all these other um other attachments but i don't really find it necessary for what i do per se in the services that I provide. Um, but yeah, I love the, um, I love the brush attachment and the lift away he was talking about. Um, I love the lift away part of it for stairs. Um, one little thing about the sharks that I find as a negative is that they're, they're not steady. They're kind of wobbly. So they fall over a lot and coming down stairways. Um, I use the hose and the brush to clean the stairs. Um, but I kind of have to straddle. I don't know how to explain this. I have there in front of me so that it doesn't fall down the stairs, you know, so they're, they're not real stable like that. And sometimes, um, I guess, especially as they get older, which it doesn't take that long for this part of it, when you are vacuuming, yeah, they fall over a lot and that's a fault for one thing. It's, it's annoying. And it could be embarrassing if I have a customer in the house and they're like, what did you do? You know, yeah, my vacuum cleaner fell over, you know, but every time it falls over, there's a risk of damage. And, um, I'm hard on my vacuum cleaners because I use them so much, I'm not using them like once a day or once a week or however a normal use of a vacuum cleaner is. I use them a lot all day long and so to more damage just the fact that I'm using them and carrying them around and you know doing a lot of things so that is a thing that I don't like about the vacuum cleaners and um, Amazing Friday who's chatting with me right now we had a conversation the other day and he asked me how many vacuum cleaners I have well I have about four or five right now I only have one fully working vacuum cleaner um, you don't like the latches for yeah you know, I mean, I don't know what the solution to that is because I've seen other types of vacuum cleaners have that latch, but I broke one. I broke the tank on one and um, I was just getting it out of my car and the door hit it and broke the latch. So for a while, um, you know, I didn't have the part for it yet and I didn't have... There was really nothing wrong with the vacuum cleaner other than the top latch on the tank didn't seal. So I would duct tape it. I duct taped it and it worked fine until I could get the part for that. So I have two of the purple navigators right now. Um, they're parts. I, I keep them for parts. That's just me. Um, I've even bought a vacuum cleaner that from a thrift store that wasn't fully it didn't have all the parts to it <laughs> people were looking at me like I was crazy but it had the parts that I needed so I bought it you know for I don't know it was less than ten dollars um and they're in my storage and uh, you know because they have different models and sometimes I do pick them up second hand uh I just keep them all <laughs> even though they're not working depending on which model I have at the moment that has all the working parts um, so your cord is super long. Uh, 
you know, I think it depends on the model. The one that I'm using now, the red one that we were talking about, that one has a longer cord than my purple ones. My purple ones didn't have as long a cord, I didn't feel. It was like maybe only about three feet shorter, but that can make a difference depending on, you know, what you're what you're where you're working or the size of your house or you know those kind of things so um but they have a decent size cord you know even the even the the purple navigator so you know i overall i like that vacuum cleaner it has some pluses and minuses i also like that it comes apart in a lot of like the hose you can detach the hose so that it's just the hose and clean that part because the hose collects a lot of debris in those um the texture i don't know what you call it um you know but a hose it's not a smooth hose it's got it's like rippled and um those those ripple places collect dust and you know um like uh, this person that i'm chatting with they have a pet yeah so we know that puppies and kitties you know they make smells and those smells can get caught in that cord so i like that you can take that apart and clean it they should come up with an invention kind of like a bottle brush or something like that where you can go down the hose and scrub the inside of it without damaging the hose and that's another problem um with a lot of vacuum cleaners not just sharks but the i can't believe i'm talking about vacuum cleaners right now it wasn't the plan but anyway those hoses um yeah they the stretch okay so that's what i'm talking about the stretch that's what it is so it's kind of like accordion or i don't know but you know what i'm talking about it's not smooth it, it, it's rippled um but if they had like a brush that would go down in there without poking a hole in that hose because i can tell you this if you get a hole in your hose which i've had that issue before too um you won't get the suction and for those of you who maybe trying to do something and you find out you got a problem with your vacuum cleaner hoses or your tank at least with a shark duct tape will get you through okay so i've had to do it more than once um i've also seen i personally haven't had to do this but i've also seen people use duct tape on um the shop vac hoses so if you have a shop vac and the hose because they're kind of stiff and brittle. They don't, they're not as flexible as, as some, um, and they, they tend to break and they really should be more flexible, but I think they had to make a compromise because that type of a, of a vacuum cleaner is really made for picking up heavy duty stuff. So they probably need to be more rigid because of that, but they break. And so you can duct tape that hole and that will get you some suction so that you can finish your job until you can get a, a new vacuum cleaner. But anyway, I need to run. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, please don't forget to give me a like. Give me a comment down below. Because most of you are probably going to see this on playback. Thank you. Amazing Friday for stopping in. It was good to see you. And um, don't forget to subscribe. Did I say that? Comment. Like. All those things. I got to run. I'm actually working on making a bunch of videos. I'm going to have some motivation Mondays. I've got some ideas for you guys. So I want to get a bunch of those out. So that over the next couple of weeks, you got something to listen to. And so I can finish up my 30 day challenge. You guys have a great day. Stay safe. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.